What's up, big Operation iDroid here, and in this video, I have something awesome to show you. RetroArch is back working on iOS 11. <laughs> RetroArch is pretty cool. One application allows you to play almost every emulator on your iOS device. If you want to know exactly what emulators RetroArch plays, I'll have a full list in the description below. Anyways, welcome back to the channel. It's so nice to have you all here again, especially you, Poke Ninja Y. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I love you all the same. Thank you so much for the support. But without wasting any more time, let's learn how to get RetroArch. Grab your iOS device and let's begin. So for this tutorial, you're going to need Google Chrome. If you don't already have it, you can easily find it on the App Store by searching for Chrome. It's super simple to install. Once you have Google Chrome, we're going to need to get RetroArch, our multi-core emulator. And to do that, all you have to do is head to Safari and type in the URL iEmulators.com. Upon arriving at the website, switch to the app section, and from there you can scroll down until you find RetroArch. Once you find RetroArch, go ahead and click on it, and click on download page to head to RetroArch's dedicated download page. Upon arriving at this page, scroll down, click on RetroArch again, hit install until you get the native iOS install prompt, and then RetroArch will begin to install on your iOS device. However, if RetroArch does not install for you, and you get the pop-up that says, unable to download app, RetroArch could not be installed at this time. Do not worry, that is completely normal and all you have to do is try downloading the app again in a couple of days and hopefully it will install for you. Once you have RetroArch installed and you try to open it, it'll say it's from an untrusted enterprise developer. And to get around that, go to your settings, scroll down to general, find device management or profiles in device management, find the enterprise certificate for RetroArch, trust it and then trust it again and now you'll be able to open RetroArch. Now, the first time you open RetroArch, it'll do like a little setup process where it's extracting the assets and this will take some time. So once it's done, you can actually take a look at all of the systems that RetroArch emulates by hitting load core. And as I mentioned at the start of the video, I have a full list in the description below, but this is a bit of an easier way to look at all of the emulators that RetroArch plays. So now that we know what emulators RetroArch plays, let's go ahead and get a ROM, aka a game, for RetroArch by heading to Google Chrome and typing in the URL romsmania.com. This website has a ton of ROMs for most of the emulators that RetroArch plays, so you can easily search for a specific game by typing in the name of the game or you can go down to the popular consoles and search by console. So I'm going to get a Super Nintendo game and ROMs Mania does have a few ads, they're pop-up ads, and you can just go ahead and cancel them out if they do appear for you, but they're not that bad compared to other websites. Um, once you find the game that you'd like, just click on the green download button and then Google Chrome will take you to this page here, which is super awesome because when you click download, it'll give you an estimate as to how long the download will take. And when it's done, you can go ahead and click on open in and then copy to RetroArch and RetroArch will crash. But don't worry, that's going to happen every time. Your game will still be in RetroArch. And to get to it, click on load content, click on containers, then select inbox, and then your game will be there. If it's a zip file, it'll ask you to load the archive. So click load archive, and then you can scroll down and for example, this is a Super Nintendo game, so you can see there's a ton of SNES cores. My favorite is the SNES 9X core, which is at the bottom. So I'm going to click on that and my game will begin to play. Now, RetroArch has a set gamepad that should work for almost every emulator that it plays. Um, as you can see here, you can switch between the D-pad and the control pad by clicking that little circle to the left of the RetroArch icon. You can also bring the controllers down by clicking the button to the right of the RetroArch icon and you can head back to the menu by clicking on the RetroArch icon and you can save your games by hitting save state. 
and then you can load that save whenever you'd like by hitting load state and that is how you save in RetroArch. Now there are some cores that do not work well or require BIOS in order for it to work well. Now some of these cores that need BIOS you can only add the BIOS with the computer which kind of sucks. However there aren't many cores that need BIOS. For example one of the cores that does need BIOS is the PlayStation 1 core. However it still will work without the BIOS but you may encounter some issues if you don't put the BIOS in through the computer, but it's up to you if you want to try it out. I tried it out a little bit and it seemed to work fine without the BIOS, but you never know. Finally, there may be some cores that just fail to load when you try to run a game, and that's because they require BIOS files, but sometimes, like in the case of Game Boy Advance or Nintendo DS, one core may require BIOS, but another core doesn't require BIOS, like the Desmume core of Nintendo DS does not require BIOS, so you can play Nintendo DS games using that core, as opposed to the Melon DS core that just crashes when you try to play a game. However, with Nintendo DS games, I couldn't figure out how to get the touchscreen to work. If anybody does figure that out, definitely let me know. If you're trying to play Nintendo DS games, I recommend using INDS, much better emulator than RetroArch if you're trying to play Nintendo DS games. And you can check out a tutorial I made on that by clicking on the card there if you want. But yeah, that's RetroArch. It's a pretty awesome emulator because it has a ton of your favorite systems all in one applications. But some of them are not the best and I guess it's up to you to decide whether you want to use this application or just use multiple applications for multiple emulators like INDS, GBA for iOS, Provenance and whatnot. So let me know your thoughts about RetroArch in the comment section below. I think it's super awesome but some of you may think differently. If you ran into any problems definitely let me know in the comment section down below as well and hopefully I or someone else that was able to get this to work um, will help you out. And I guess that is pretty much it. Don't forget to subscribe for another awesome tutorial like this one next week. And I guess until then, check out some of my other videos and I'll see you all next week. Bye.